Welcome back to Project Camp. This is uh, the place that I've called home summers my entire life. Over 40 years of spending a lot of time here and I'm trying to share and enjoy with you guys as well. Uh, it's just a little bit of a departure from my main channel, the electronics channel, Make Me Lab. And this is uh, this is my off-grid camper and new tractor and, well, new to me. And it's Sunday and we're gonna try and get some work done. Uh, my best friend is coming up today to do some fishing later this aft. I'm not sure whether I'll video it. Hoping we can take the canoe out and go enjoy a little bit of a trip upriver and uh, maybe catch some pike. Uh, I've been working on the tractor this morning a little bit and this is my work cart that you've seen in previous videos. And it's coming along. I'm really happy with how things have come along on the tractor. It's uh, it's at the point now where it's almost ready to do some serious work whenever it needs. I used it this, this week quite a bit and uh, no major complaints. So it's time to change all the fluids. Uh, make sure that I find all the grease fittings because I'm finding grease zerks all over the place that I wouldn't have expected to be there, which is pretty awesome. Grease fittings are good. And yeah, we'll just keep puttering away. I was just doing a little bit of wire cleanup in the basement and I forgot I had these uh, water sensors that I got. And these are just eBay China specials. They have an on off switch so I can turn them off when I'm not here and it's up here. So if we turn this to the on position, which it's not, this is just our moisture sensor. And if I wet my finger and touch it, <laughs> as simple as that. Uh, I think it says it was like 120 decibels. It's pretty loud if you put pure water on it and make the full contact. So I'm going to stick this over back in there behind my water pump, actually under the water pump. I have, I got three of them and I can put them wherever. And if I spring a water leak, this, this is the area I care about because here's my three kilowatt inverter and uh, that'll let me know. I just have to remember to turn it off when I'm not here and it won't deplete the batteries and yeah, one little measure of safety. Why not that uh, save my equipment if, say, the diaphragm pump or the line sprung a leak and I'm not going to know about it until it, something goes. <laughs> we'll give it a go. OK, super happy about this because it's given me the kick to get into gear. I'll bring you right inside the bowels here. And there is my water pump. It's just a, a 12 volt diaphragm pump and this is the line going to the freshwater tank and I, I just double sided tape the sensor directly underneath the pump housing. So if that pump housing ever cracks or leaks or fittings leak, it's going to drip right on it. And then I ran the line out to the edge where my battery switches live and this is giving me the excuse to get the heck moving and fix some things that I've been ignoring such as my battery temperature sensor. It couldn't reach the batteries where they were before, but with these sealed batteries are in the basement here and the hatches are always open anytime they're charging, but they are sealed lead acid. And I will stick the temp sensor on the side finally. Uh, they don't get hot even at 75 amps. It's never been a problem. But that will protect and throttle back the charge if uh, if they get hot. And now uh, I just moved all this stuff around and I already cut a piece of wood last time to make a bulkhead and we can finally mount this stuff proper so it isn't a complete joke like it is right now. It's functional, but it's, it's not unsafe, but it's definitely uh, unsanitary in the electrical sense. So let's fix it up. All right, I think I got it. How everything's gonna go. I'll do fuse into switch. I'm gonna rotate those switches 90 degrees so they make a little bit more sense. And this one the same. And then our solar disconnect for our DC 110 volt right over here. And just mounted to the side of them. And that will be quite better looking than what it is before. And this panel's easily removable. And yeah, this trailer only gets moved a kilometer, so it'll be just fine. And that'll be pretty cool. I'm gonna replace this heat shrink. And yeah, uh, I can't get into it right now though. 
because uh, I don't have enough time now to rip all this apart. I got to disconnect everything electrically to bolt it on. The bolts are underneath and the fuses, so we'll get it to it a little later. So nice for me to take a break from electronics and software world and just get back to basics and back to my roots and get to finally drive my quad around a little bit. Still under a thousand kilometers on her. She's still, still nearly showroom condition. A little bit of hot dogs for lunch again today. Big camp lunch, nice and simple. And I get to enjoy this. Just incredible. Be. I think it is. Oh, this is okay. Like, yeah, something changed. If I go home without tipping it in the drink, I'm doing pretty good. Right up here on the right is where I tipped it in the drink the year before last. By yourself, it's hard to run a 16 foot canoe. That's what a kayak is going way better. Way better. Well, that was a fun day yesterday, getting out on the canoe, and today, well, another beautiful day. This is just incredible. I picked the right week for holidays. But back to maybe get this solar system on the go. Uh, when my friend was over, we he, he noticed, as well as I, this line here was actually hot and this is from the solar system charge you can see that lug has actually discolored so it's been hot since i put it on um, i thought it was maybe the bend radius but it's not there must be incorrect soldering of the lugs it's got to be there's got to be poor contact in there anyway there's high resistance in that line so uh, i've got to fix that too Check this out. This is where we sit. I am pretty happy with this. I ran out of anchors for my cabling. So I anchor this one, I'll anchor it in two places here. And I made a whole new cable here with a more suitable bend radius. This one I tried to cut apart and see if my solder joints were bad or whatever. Uh, well, that was burned. Uh, this this heat shrink is so damn good. It's got the gooey glue on the inside of it. I can't get it off It literally comes off in tiny pieces. So 
Yeah, I just made a brand new one and a little bit longer with a nicer, more suitable bend radius for number two welding wire. So let's try it on, on, and our DC is already on. There we go. We're charging from the solar panels. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'll start the generator for a bit and hit this with 75 amps of charge rate from the inverter. And the batteries are pretty low right now, so they'll do full 75 amps for quite a while and we'll see what gets hot. Um, number two is a little bit small, but it's fine. Uh, it just, yeah, I'd be curious. We'll see if this warm spot goes away now and maybe next time we'll bring the thermal camera. Okay, about half an hour at 75 amp charge rate and that is still warm but not hot. That's just the fact of life with the number two cable. Hindsight, I wish I could have used like single hot, but I would have had trouble with all the lugs. No one around here sells hot or double hot anything and the lugs would have been a real problem. So yeah, it would have been just difficult. So I, I don't regret this. It's going to be a little bit warm at high charge rates, but solar only can charge up to 60 amps and it'll never hit 60. And the only other thing is uh, the knockouts were knocked out too big on this box. So I can't put strain reliefs or PGs uh, that go down to this size. Uh, I tried to cobble something together and it didn't work. So I may get another box and use the, the strain release properly. I have plenty of them, but uh, you just can't go from that big of a hole down to that small. Or they probably sell them. I can probably find them maybe, but it looks, yeah. Anyway, cool. I'm happy with that.